December 1972. Apollo 17, the last Apollo mission to the moon. It would be December 14, 1972, that Apollo 17's commander, Navy pilot named Gene Cernan, he prepared to depart for Earth from the surface of the moon. And he spoke words that have really echoed through our time as an ongoing admonition. He said, and I quote, America's challenge of today has forged man's destiny of tomorrow. And he said, as we leave the moon, we leave as we came. And God willing, we shall return with peace and hope for all mankind. Gene Cerna was the last man to walk on the moon. But he didn't want to stay the last. He spent the rest of his natural life advocating for America to go back to the moon. And we are going to honor Gene Cernan's memory by putting the next man and the first woman on the moon in just a few short years. The milestone started early on in the year with the SLS core stage for the Artemis 1 mission rolling out of the Mish Hude Assembly Facility in Alabama and taking a barge ride to the Stennis Space Center in Mississippi where the massive stage was lifted and positioned onto a test stand to begin its Green Run test series. The test series is a comprehensive evaluation of the core stage to validate that it's ready for launch. The series has eight tests, the first was done in late January where technicians hit the core stage with a hammer to check its structural integrity. Because of multiple COVID-19 cases being reported in the area, NASA instituted a mandatory telework policy which put Green Run on hold. This delayed the conclusion of the test campaign, before the COVID-19 restrictions, it was scheduled for August. Some months later when restrictions loosened, NASA slowly brought workers back on site to continue the testing. Work at Stennis was once again going and tests were being done. One of the highlights of the tests done in the year was the engine gimbal test done on test 5. A static fire is scheduled for test 8 however due to COVID-19 pausing work, some technical issues and hurricanes, this has been pushed to January 2021. While the Artemis 1 core stage was being tested at Stennis, work continued in the Mish Hude assembly facility where engineers and technicians worked to make ready the SLS hardware for the Artemis 2 and Artemis 3 missions. A liquid hydrogen fuel tank previously meant for the Artemis 1 mission nicknamed Julia was repurposed as an Artemis 3 tank after engineers found a way to fix it after it was deemed non-flight worthy back in 2017. As of the making of this video, Artemis 3 is scheduled to launch four NASA astronauts to the moon on an Orion spacecraft and space launch system rocket, half of the crew will remain in lunar orbit conducting science experiments and research on board a station of operations called Gateway while the other half will become the next humans to land on the moon. The mission is scheduled for 2024. In September, NASA and Northrop Grumman tested out a test booster called FSB-1, or Flight Support Booster-1, and this booster was fired to test out new materials and techniques for boosters that will power missions starting from Artemis 3. For the first few Artemis missions, the Space Launch System will make use of the Interim Cryogenic Propulsion Stage, however as the name suggests, this is only a temporary solution. Starting from Artemis 4, SLS will use the more capable exploration upper stage which, in December passed its critical design review with flying colors, and is now greenlit to start production. All 10 booster segments arrived by train from a Northrop Grumman facility to the Kennedy Space Center where the aft segments were assembled and the other 8 segments were put in storage at the rotation, processing and surge facility. In July, the Launch Vehicle Stage Adapter, or LVSA, arrived at KSC from the Marshall Space Center in Huntsville, Alabama on a Pegasus barge. It was taken to the VAB ahead of stacking. Booster stacking began in the VAB with the first two segments being stacked on top of the mobile launcher after it took a brief trip to Launch Pad 39B where the mission will launch. Booster stacking will soon continue while the core stage continues to near to the end of its Green Run test campaign. The boosters can only remain stacked for one year. While the core stage was undergoing green run, Orion was at the Plum Brook Test Facility, which was recently renamed to the Neil Armstrong Test Facility, where it was undergoing rigorous environmental testing. 
After that was done, it took a Super Guppy back to KSC where it was put in storage. Eventually it was taken out of storage and underwent some hardware installation ahead of turnover to EGS. Turnover to EGS is expected to occur sometime in January 2021. While the Artemis 1 Orion was being worked on, progress was made with the Orion vehicles for Artemis 2 and 3. Parts of Orion's launch abort system for the Artemis 2 mission arrived at KSC while technicians kept working on the Orion pressure vessel and heat shield. The Artemis 3 vehicle began to take shape as well, with components of the pressure vessel coming together and work starting on the third European service module. In December, an Orion mission simulator arrived at the Johnson Space Center. This simulator will be used to train Artemis astronauts for their missions once they're assigned. In April, NASA selected three U.S. companies to develop human landing systems for the Artemis program. The companies picked were Blue Origin and its national team, Dynetics, and SpaceX. They were funded from highest to lowest in that exact order. All three contractors made full-scale mock-ups of their respective landers, but only SpaceX and Blue Origin have publicly shown hardware progress outside of those mock-ups. Blue Origin made a manufacturing pathfinder of their descent stage alongside numerous engine tests and such while SpaceX flew a few Starship atmospheric test flights and began assembling the first Super Heavy prototype. When operational, Super Heavy will launch the Lunar Starship for Artemis missions to the Moon. In March, NASA selected SpaceX to deliver science and cargo to the Gateway using a vehicle derived from their Dragon spacecraft which has delivered cargo to the International Space Station for years. This new lunar variant of the Dragon is called Dragon XL and it will launch on a Falcon Heavy. Also in 2020, NASA made the choice to not launch the power and propulsion element and the habitation and logistics outpost on separate rockets, instead opting to launch them on the same launch vehicle in one launch to cut down on schedule and technical risk. The habitation and logistics outpost, also known as HALO, was selected to be built by Northrop Grumman Innovation Systems earlier in the year. HALO is the initial crew cabin part of the Gateway Station. Construction on the module started halfway through the year as Thales Group began forging the primary structure of the module. Two science experiments were assigned to Gateway, one from the European Space Agency and one from NASA, both of which will help give information regarding solar radiation and solar wind. In October NASA and seven other international partners signed the Artemis Accords which was a treaty that includes ground rules for the nature of operations on and around the moon regarding international cooperation between nations, an eighth partner joined later and more will join in the future. In December, NASA also made a comprehensive report detailing the science priorities for the Artemis 3 moon landing mission and announced 18 astronauts that will fly on the first few Artemis missions to the moon. These astronauts will help in the development of the human landing system and will eventually fly on the Space Launch System and Orion spacecraft. Out of the astronauts picked, two of them have a chance of becoming the next man and first woman on the moon. They were announced during the eighth meeting of the National Space Council at the Kennedy Space Center in Florida where the head of the Space Council called them, the heroes of the future, who will carry us back to the moon and beyond. Soon after that, NASA and the Canadian Space Agency signed an agreement to collaborate on the Gateway. Canada will provide its Canadarm3 robotic arm for use on the Lunar Gateway Station. This deal also allowed Canada two seats on upcoming Artemis missions. One will be on Artemis 2, the first crewed Artemis flight around the Moon. The second will be on a later Artemis mission to the Gateway. In 2021, the core stage will static fire for 8 minutes in a conclusive test to the Green Run test series which will be broadcast on NASA TV. Stacking will be complete with the space launch system. As of the recording of this video the launch of Artemis 1, the first uncrewed integrated test flight of the SLS and Orion together, is scheduled for later this year, in November, however this may be subject to change as there's not much margin left for 2021 due to the many green run delays and potential future delays such as potential static fire scrubs and potential delays that may occur during shipping due to weather and unforeseen issues that may occur during pre-launch operations, this may make Artemis 1 slip into early 2022. We'll know for certain whether or not Artemis 1 can launch in 2021 or not after the conclusion of the Green Run test series. Work on Artemis 2 and 3 hardware will continue, the Artemis 2 core stage will go through many key milestones ahead of rollout and delivery to KSC in March 2022. 
Also in 2021, NASA will downselect its three HLS landers to only one or two landers. With $850 million, HLS is short of the $3.3 billion that the White House requested making a 2024 landing difficult however it's likely that the 2024 mandate will also go away leading to a more relaxed development schedule. 2021 will be a landmark year for Artemis and the way it goes will determine the future of the program. Thanks for watching. Here are the sources used in the creation of this video.